So anyway, I think we can get started. It's five o'clock and I would like to welcome the members of the um, Bitcoin Trend and Forecast and members of Aura Rights um, Crypto Astrology Patreon group and um, report owners to a really special afternoon of interaction between Mario Slandman and Aura Wright. Um, both who are absolute professionals in their field. Um, before we get started, though, I think if we could, Marius and Aurea, or excuse me, if you could share a little bit about your journey um, in cryptos. And if we could start with Aura, Aura, sure, if you could give us a little bit of your background and how you came to cryptos. And then Marius will turn it over to you. And then um, if you could talk a little bit about your journey as well. Sure, so sure Aura? thing. Yeah, of course. Um, so first of all, I just want to thank everyone for being here. I just want you guys to know that I'm really excited to be talking to you all and that, um, you know, my own group as well as Marius's group. And, you know, I'll do my best to make sure that it's worth your time because you could all be watching Netflix, I think, right now instead <laughs> if you wanted to be. But I'm really glad to be here. And uh, so the first thing for me, how I got into crypto, I actually heard about it first in 2011. I had heard something from... Um, from Roger Ver, right? And uh, I got talked out of it. I wanted to buy into it and I got talked out of it by because I didn't know how, right? I couldn't do it technologically. I didn't know how to do it. And I was asking a friend of mine who was more technological to help me and he was like, oh no, this, don't do it. So, and, and I couldn't figure, I just couldn't figure it out at that time on my own. So um, it was a few years later. And you know, I, there was also sort of the possibility that it wasn't gonna take off back then. But uh, it was 2016 when I did get in. I was watching it in 2016. I was like, I've got to, I've got to buy this. I've got to buy this. And then I, um, so you know, basically my, you know, I have my great uncle is one of the most famous economists in the world. He was when he was alive. His name is Abba Lerner, and his his book Flation is taught in a lot of Ivy League schools. And you know, he has been communicating with me about crypto from the other side, right, all along. So in 2016, my sort of my spiritual guides were like yelling at me to buy it and i had uh gotten a chunk of money so i put it in put a, most of it into crypto at the end of 2016 and that's you know where the journey began there was definitely a lot of learning that went on with dealing with this new infrastructure this new environment as it evolved and grew along the way some of the tricks some of the you know, just the disinformation, a lot of viciousness of trolls and uh, like propaganda and manipulation of the market that came to be really obvious over the those those years after I joined in 2016. But I was immersed, right? For the next year, I was just like learning everything I could and writing some articles as well on Steemit and things like that. So that's pretty much how I got in. And then I didn't really start, I mean, I had my YouTube channel and I didn't really come out and start doing real public forecasts until April, May of this year. And that's basically when I started. And then a, a month or two after that, I started the timing report and I started my Patreon in September. So I've been working with people this year, this last year, for less than a year um, and getting prepared for the, the swings, the, uh, the big events that are going on in the world, that sort of thing. So that's it. Great. Well, thank you for sharing. And Marius? That's a fantastic story, uh, Aura. Uh, yes, yeah, really great. And thank you for everybody that's here as well. Bill, I'm just going to be very quick. Uh, I'm not going to give a long story, no but I think my journey in crypto started when I was about 12 years old. Now, most of you know that I grew up in an orphanage in South Africa. And uh, growing up in the orphanage uh, gave me a lot of inside or inner abilities. And it made you so strong. And that is what's coming out now where the resilience that I had is what is actually pushing me forward now. <clears throat> now, when I was 12 years old, I just one day had a very big vision lying on the grass, closed my eyes, and uh, suddenly I moved myself into Alaska catching fish. And I awoke kind of from there. I wasn't sleeping, but I, I just call it I awoke. And I suddenly realized that, wow, my brain, my mind is so powerful. And I decided from the age of 12 that I'm going to put my mind to work and see if this really works. Because if I had such a great experience feeling like I was in, in Alaska, days after that, 
it felt that I was there, that I could feel the ice, the cold. I could see myself catching that salmon. It was such a real experience. And then what I did is in school, now I wasn't the brightest kid in school, but I grew up in a place called Dispatch in South Africa, and I became the top student from nowhere. The teachers were amazed. They, even when we wrote exams, put somebody next to me to make sure that I'm not cheating. And I excelled through school. Now, now remember, you have to think back here in the 1980s now. In the 1980s, when you were an orphan kid, you were nothing in South Africa. You were an outcast. We had to sit in the back of the class, on the floor, never had shoes, broken, torn clothing. You were the outcast. When the bell rang, when we had a pause, let's say when you go out to school and you have a bit of a pause and you play around, we never had food. So we were waiting at the rubbish bins. When the bell rang, people would throw their, their sandwiches in there. Then we would dig the sandwiches out <laughs> just to have food. So that created in me uh, the ability to look after the little guy. I'm for the little guy and I always will be. So right through my life, I ended up going through school, top student. I wanted to become a special forces soldier in South Africa in the military. And I was a skinny kid. Everybody laughed at me and said, you will never make it. You can't make it. But I put my mind to work. And I said to myself daily, I will make it. And guess what? Uh, I left South Africa as a lieutenant, the military. I became one of the best well-known special forces. And guys, it's not about braggadocious. Just understand me right. I'm trying to get a point across. I became a lieutenant in the special forces. Two people of 600 people qualified for that in my segment. Only two people. So, uh, and the evidence is there. I know a lot of people have hit me, trolls have hit me, but there's a well-known uh, commander or lieutenant general actually in the South African army who validated this. If you go into the parachute battalion in Bloemfontein in South Africa, I'm even on the wall. You know, they call it the wall of fame and that's where they got the picture. So it's a true story. It's not a lie. You can, if you, if you live in Bloemfontein, South Africa, go into parachute battalion, you'll see it's there. But I want to show you the power of your mind. Then what I did is I left South Africa. I went and studied in America. And I wanted to go and work for the biggest companies in the world. I went and studied, came out, started working for Shell in the oil and gas industry. Now, I finished with a master's in occupational health and safety with a medical background as well as an engineering background. Unheard of. Now, remember, when I went to America, I could barely speak English. It may sound that I speak English very well, but English is actually my fourth language. So <clears throat> I went and worked for Shell uh, for the largest oil and gas companies in the world. And still today, I do a lot of work for Shell, BAP, Woodside, Halliburton, Slumberjay, you name it, the largest oil and gas companies in the world. So what I did is in the last eight, nine, 10 years, I developed an algorithmic formula. Now this formula takes into account what the oil and gas companies have been doing for the last 10 years. If we go back in Shell and we say, okay, right, how did you drill in drilling and completions to get the gas out of the ground? And we take all the data, and this is very important that we understand this, and I think Aura will touch on this. I'll hand over to Aura shortly. Just give me another two minutes. If you take all the data, the past data of the 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago from Shell, BAP, Woodside, Alibut, and you have a look and see how they operated. Just remember, they operate according to a procedure, a safe work method statement, a standard operating procedure, whatever they use. If I take that data, put it in the system, and I say, based on your past history, this is how you work. These are the incidents that you had over the number of 40 years. I can now predict and say to Shell, BAP, Woodside, Halliburton, Shell, when you will have a fatality, a near miss, or an incident. And guys, it was astonishing how accurate these things were. I'm very famous for calling a, a two fatalities that were going to happen in around about 2012, 13 for a very large oil and gas company in Australia. We warned them and we said in June, there's going to be a fatality. They didn't take notice and bang, it happened. They called me in, they said, how do we stop the next fatality? We said the next fatality is in September. This is what you do. They did it, they had a near miss, and the person survived. And since then, it's been taking off. Now, what happened one day is that 
I was sitting in bed just looking at my phone and Wendy was sitting next to me quickly going through her emails and she was just laughing and said, wow. <laughs> and I said, what are you laughing about? Why are you so happy? She said, no, look at all this profit I made. And one of the coins that she invested in, in cryptocurrencies jumped up 34,000%. Now you can imagine the profit that she made and I didn't take much notice of it. And because I wasn't really interested in crypto, I've heard about Bitcoin and little did I know that she invested in Bitcoin about six months before I even thought about it. And she made staggering gains. She showed me that and I couldn't sleep that night. I went like, this is unbelievable. I need to have a look at this. I couldn't sleep. And for the next week, I analyzed Bitcoin, Bitcoin only. And I had a look at the past data. Now, remember this, guys. If you want to know where you are going to be in 10 years from now, five years from now, listen to what you say to yourself today. If you constantly say that I will, I will never get out of debt, I will never make it, oh, I always lose. Whenever I buy, the market goes down. Guess what? It will keep on happening. This is the same as the oil and gas companies. If they keep on doing what they did in the past, they're going to have the same results. And this is why I mentioned this to you. So I started looking at Bitcoin specifically and I discovered an algorithmic pattern. And that algorithmic pattern is the one that I started trading from late 2016, 2017. And then where we are now, probably the world's largest subscription base with over 22,000 members all around the world. Now, uh, we are very big in Africa. Africa is coming along really well. Now, just understand me right, guys. We don't get everything 100% correct. We don't know why. We would predict certain things that doesn't play out like that. I don't think anybody can really be that accurate. Sometimes our dates and timelines don't work, but we are more accurate than what, or we are, we are reasonably accurate. Like, for example, one of the things, and I think Aura will probably touch on that now, we see a drop coming. This drop is going to happen probably in the next 24 to 48 hours. A major drop. We're going to go below 4,000. This is what we predict. So this is just a short journey from, uh, from where I came to where we are now. So I'll hand over to you, Bill. Thank you. Thanks, Marius. Thank you for sharing, Anora. Thank you for sharing as well. Um, so I'm just going to give a little brief history of me, Bill Nolan. I straddle both um, Marius and Aura's um, sites. And, and what I found was amazing, the correlation between Aura's pricing and timing and Marius's pricing. And there were too many hits to be just coincidental because I don't believe there are any coincidences. So over time and watching um, and being a member of both of their um, their websites, I thought, man, this would be a great opportunity to get the two of them together and share how they see um, the crypto industry. Um, you know, a, a little bit of a look ahead from 20, um, 2020 to 2023 um, with maybe some focus on some, geo, geopolit some geopolitics, some things that are going on in the world that maybe can be a little bit sensitive to talk about um, individually on your channels but i think that this is a quote unquote safe space today and so if there are things that we want to discuss or things that we feel relevant to what's going on in the world i think um i think we should we should tackle those um those you know those areas and and um and let's talk about it so or if I could, we'll start with um, the first question, and, and you've got it, but I'll read it here, and then we'll jump off from here. Uh, um, can you give us a big picture overview of where we are headed in 2020, taking into consideration this year from an astrological perspective appears to be a very busy year with five eclipses. Also, can you explain to our members the significance of an eclipse and how it impacts us and how we can use this information to prepare and prosper. Okay, sure, absolutely. So, um, first of all, I just want to just uh, you know respond to something that Marius was saying about you know your mind, of course, being the ruling factor of what you manifest in your life. That's absolutely true. But also, I just like to point out that most people who have gotten into crypto by now, who are here already, 
are sort of the outcasts or the weird ones or the people who've had sort of unusual experiences in life because that's kind of what made us a little uh, different enough to swim against the tide, right? And to go get into this space. So, and I am definitely one of those people. I mean, I didn't really get into my childhood thing, but I'm the child of hippies and I grew up in this completely alternative universe where I was exposed to all these ideas that have become mainstream later. But um, I started learning astrology when I was nine years old. So I was really young and I studied it from my stepmother and then I was just fascinated, right? So I just learned everything I could about it. And I, I learned how to do the math by hand, which nobody does now because you've got computers. But, um, and also what Marius was saying about a drop coming in crypto, that's definitely ties in and, and it confirms, or I can confirm that that's what I'm getting astrologically. Um, so this is going to be our next good window for buying in before we have a really big spike in uh, April. So but the astrology, okay, let's talk about um, astrology. So first of all, there's timing to every year. We have the seasonal degrees are hugely important and I'm not gonna get into great detail about them. We just had the spring um, equinox. It signals the beginning of the new year. It's the new astrological year because it's Aries, it's the start, it's the beginning of everything. We're moving into the religious season of Easter, which um, has certain energetic principles and properties and powers to it. There's just sort of some uh, like a uh, physio, I don't want to say physio, I'm, uh, the word's escaping me. I'm thinking like uh, there's, there's certain like gravitational differences on those days of the year. There's the longest day of the year, the shortest day of the year, the equinoxes, the spring and fall equinoxes are two days where you can literally take an egg and I've done this mm -hmm. and balance it on its narrow pointy end. There's only two days of the year you can do it. And it will stay there. It will just stay there until the gravitational sh shift happens so that it, it's no longer in balance like that. And it will, I did this one year, went to bed and it had rolled off the counter and fallen on the ground and broken the next morning. But you can do this during that day. We just passed it, but it happens again in the fall. So the seasonal degrees have, and so this is just a um, gravitational reality, right? This is physics. But it has an impact on us on an energetic and spiritual level as well, because it is about the framework of the planet. It is the grid of the planet. And to me, those degrees, these, the fall, the, the spring, summer, winter, you know, fall degrees are all about this major battle that humanity's already always been in about the battle between good versus evil. So the timing of the eclipses, the timing of, so eclipses, in fact, there's, there's six of them in 2020, not five. Um, there, we, almost, we always every year have two pairs, which is four eclipses. They come in pairs. There's a solar and a lunar eclipse. So this year we have three pairs of them. We've already had two of them. I think we might actually we may have only had one. I can't remember now. We've we had have one. Two, we have had one. So we have five more, right? So we have two coming up in June, right? So we're in the window of energy of those eclipses. So one of them is on June 5th and the other one is on the summer solstice of June 21st. This is probably the hinge point for everything that is taking place this year in the world. It is incredibly important. Now, three years ago, we had a total eclipse. I wrote an, eclipse, uh, an article where I discussed a virus and the potential for a pandemic virus. And that was actually within the window of time when the coronavirus was patented. So it wasn't released to the world until now. So the eclipses, what happens is that we enter a zone of their influence from three months before they happen, and then it lasts, the impact lasts until three months after. So they're all six months of influence. Something really profound, like a solar eclipse on the, the summer solstice is uh, even stronger. So this is essentially the era, the age, the information that was being predicted by the Mayans at the end of the Kali Yuga, when they talk about the 144,000, you know, Bakhtun and the changing of the era from one era to the other. And what we are actually experiencing is an end of the era of darkness and moving into an era of light. However, that requires personal choice and responsibility on an individual level for us to manifest that. So it's good news, but the forces of darkness don't want that. So the eclipse 
energies become mo they they we start to feel them three months in advance they become stronger two weeks in advance of the eclipse and then they're most strong the three days before the eclipse happens you know up until so from the 18th the 21st of june we're going to have really intense energies about this particular eclipse and the solar eclipse on the summer solstice which is the hottest day of the year the longest day of the year and represents the sign of cancer the zero degree of cancer it is the strongest emotion the most intense feelings right and that is what this degree represents also sort of divine feminine energy the mother the divine mother energy whereas you know the other the other you know there's different archetypes represented by the other um energies so it's emotion. It's about emotion. And the kind of issues that are going on right now and unfolding on the world right now are about triggering us into negative emotion. And the more negative emotion that we experience and that we buy into, like watching the news every night and listening to them tell us horrible things <laughs> about, you know, be scared of, that um, triggers us to manifest these negative realities. So this is an opportunity for all of us to look into our emotional content and to overcome our fears and to choose we can either be in faith or fear you can either be coming from love or you can be coming from fear so this is our opportunity to be coming from love and community and unity instead of that place of fear and it is so much more powerful to do that and it is how we manifest positive future for ourselves and for our loved ones so while it's important to recognize realities around us, it's also important to interpret them and use them in a positive way. So that's kind of my overview on the astrology. These eclipses are making major world events happen this year. Um, mainly the main focus point would be that solar eclipse because it is key to the gravitational pull on the planet. It is key to our own personal individual true north or south you know internally so any force so the, the goal of forces of darkness is going to be to scramble us confuse us put us into negative emotion and darker uh space states of consciousness so that's the challenge is overcoming it and there are frightening things happening in the world so each of us is going to be faced with our you know the id the 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 that part of the consciousness that is all of our fears that are buried under the, the you know the bed right so we get a chance to examine them and dismantle them and defeat <clears throat> them right like uh in harry potter it's like the boggart you can put it in a dress and make it on put it on roller skates and make it look ridiculous because <laughs> that's that works that's actually really powerful so that's kind of my take on the key astrology of this year so can I ask then, given that we know pretty much ahead of time when these eclipses will be occurring, um, how do we prepare our, well, I think you've given us a, you know, a good indication of how we prepare ourselves for them, I think from an emotional and spiritual standpoint, but right. from a financial and crypto standpoint, what, what, what do these indicate in that particular world, in the crypto world? So... Eclipses aren't really going to influence the price. Well, sort of. They impact the chart of Bitcoin, right? So they're going to show me the area. Well, so I don't have. So Bitcoin is its own. It's just, there's not. It gives me some indication of what, how it's going to be um, used and uh, manipulated. The timing I do is basically aspects on the Bitcoin chart. But what I can say about what these eclipses are telling me about um, financial matters is that this is the timing when they're setting up the reset of the financial system. And beginning last fall, I think, I was seeing that Trump was going to be having a, a meeting with all the heads of state of like China and other, you know, the, the whatever Davos, whatever all those leaders that get together. And they're going to discuss a reset of the financial system. They're going to create a new financial yardstick. It will be some new instrument. I was getting the, the word con converge or concord or accord, something along those lines that they're going to use to name it. And that will be the yardstick by which all fiat money is going to be valued. It could be a gold stable reset. This is literally the reset. It is happening. 
And um, I, so that's what I see it as, as this is the timing of the financial reset. In the meantime, we have lots of very volatile moves coming that we're already experiencing, right? We just watched the stock market mm -hmm. drop 40%. And um, silver dropped down to eleven dollars in paper, but you couldn't find it that easily. You know, it, all, yeah. Every supplier was uh, running out. So these are the kind of things that we're trying to be prepared for, right? These are the things I discuss with my people, and that's where that's what's going on. Is that I think that by June twenty-first, and those three days before June twenty-first, they're going to be really creating all kinds of fear in people about the markets, you know, and what's going on with them. But there will be, you know, bank shutdowns, there will be, and, and this could be happening in the next three weeks because of Easter. So they want to establish that the old system isn't working anymore. So they want to herd everyone into their new system. So we could, you know, it's a good idea to get your money out of the banks and uh, you could at least put it in a stable coin, you know, into a, you know, one of the dollar stable coins, crypto stable coins, because you're, they're going to shut it down, shut down banks, and people are not going to be able to get their money out. They're going to limit you to like, I don't know, $200 a week or something. And it's going to be like, that's my money, but you can't touch it. So you don't want that to happen to you <laughs> at all. So getting it into your own hands in whatever way you can, as soon as possible, is the way to do that. Um, is the way to protect yourself. So this is the kind of thing that these eclipses show me. They show me the areas. That when I look at the eclipse chart, it shows me the pattern of what is planned, basically what they're planning to do um, with that energy. Because mm -hmm. I promise you that the forces, the cabal, the elite, the, the forces of darkness or whatever, they know astrology. They do use it. They understand yes. how to use the symbolism for their benefit. So we want to use it for our benefit. So, you know, that's, no. that's how that plays out. Agree a hundred percent. And I think we've, uh, we always talk about this, you know, JP Morgan said, yes. you know, millionaires don't use astrology, billionaires do. That's right. And so it is definitely taken seriously in the, that strata of the financial world. So, um, so then do you see, and I think Marius kind of chimed in at the same time, um, you guys see a drop in cryptos in this current cycle um do you see us touching new low lows in this in this current cycle or just bouncing off an old low back to maybe eight or nine thousand dollars did you want me to go there bill or yeah marius you want to go yeah sure yeah okay for us to find the exact low is very difficult because when you go down and you work out the mathematical equations, nothing works out. Like any TA at the moment, tra trending analysis, trading analysis, any uh, technical analysis just doesn't work out really, even from that perspective. But what we do see is that we do break below $4,000. The problem is this, when you break below $4,000 and you then break uh, let me just see what that level is. It's actually my report and I can't remember you now the report of two or three days ago that we, that we said, but there's a certain was resistance 30, level. 36 yeah, something. I think it was 36. Uh, if we break below 36, that level, 90. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. That's correct. If we break below that, our data shows that we are going to land around about $3,000 more or less. Now, that for me will be a very good entry point if we land there yes. because to time the exact low is going to be completely difficult because you sit mm -hmm. with a, a control of price in the cryptocurrency world. For example, the previous drop in Bitfinex stopped exactly at $4,000, not 4,001 and 25 cents, $4,000 on Bitfinex. How is that even possible? You know, at weeks down to that price, some orders get executed and then it goes up. Now, here is the key. At $3,000, what we see mathematically, that is about, from memory, about a 40, 40, 43% drop. You can actually go and work out what the other cryptos will drop as well, more or less the same percentage. But now, I, I always leave a little bit of cash on the side. I don't buy it all. You lather in your buys. 
Because if it weaks down and drops below 3,000, the lowest that we see it go, and way back in September last year, we did a webinar and we warned, and, and we told our members and we said, look guys, the lowest that we see mathematically Bitcoin drop is 1867. So be prepared for 1867, that was the exact number we gave at that time, and we said at that point that when it drops, it will be a, a world event, which we now know is kind of like coronavirus, but the world economy is bad as well. I'm, I mean, in my opinion, I think they are just blaming the world monetary system, the bad economy, just on coronavirus. That's my own, own opinion here, because mm -hmm. the world economy is still terrible. But if it goes further down, the lowest target is 1325, 1325. The way you play this drop is you ladder in your buys. You never ever go. Somebody asked me yesterday and said, I've got 7,000. At what level do I buy? I said, no, it's not as simple as that. What you do is split it up in 10 segments and create 10 different orders. So you buy when it goes to three, six, because it's less than four. You buy when it goes to three, five, you buy when it goes to 34 and you just wait because when the market turns up and my report actually shows how we go down. Remember we go down to a certain level. You'll see seven points down. Like normally you get five waves down in Elliott wave. This will have seven waves down to the bottom. And uh, I believe at the bottom, what's going to happen is that it's going to create a inverted head and shoulders. And then we're going to come back up again. So when you see that inverted head and shoulders, remember it comes down on the left, it creates a shoulder, it goes up and then it goes lower. Now it's always difficult to figure out where that is because it can even go lower. But when you see that head being created where it goes back up, almost the same level as the head and shoulders, then you know that it's going to go further up and then drop again. The same as the left side. And that is a good entry. So that's how you find the low. Yeah. I hope that answer the, mm -hmm. answers the question, Bill. Can I yes, interject something you, really, yes. really quick about that? So what I get is just the time zones. Like I, I've been, and, and I was told numbers, right? Like my guides were giving me numbers. So last fall, like September, August, I was getting that we're dropping down to 4,000 and 3,600, right? So that I get them a little more round than you. I don't get like the, 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 the last two numbers usually, but this month in March, the timing report had the couple of days where we were, and I was very strongly saying, I expect us to go under $4,000 here in March. And we did, we dropped down to 30, under 44, down to, you're saying it says four on Bitfinex. But when I will look on trading view, there are, there are drops down into the 37 that happened uh, this month in March. So it just kind of depends sometimes where you're looking, but um, I agree with you on laddering in your buys. That's exactly the way to do it. I was also told last fall, last summer, that we were going to drop down to what I got was 1300. So you have something above 1300. I would, you know, obviously say don't try and catch the $1,300 level. Try and catch 1400, right? Always set your, your buy orders and your sell orders a little with a little cushion to the top and the bottom because trying to catch those ends is really where you get like spun out of the machine, right? You want to be careful. So you don't want that to happen to you. But so yeah, we're getting the same kind of information. What I get is dates and times and I get given some, and, and they're windows. I don't ever know exactly. Like I've been waiting for six months for these lows to happen, but I knew the numbers and I was waiting for the windows for that to happen. So what happens is because we got down to that $4,000 level in March, we're going to have to go down to it again in order to complete the pattern. The pattern's not done. It's like, and, and it's not over because we still have to get all the way down to 13. But that doesn't mean between here and $1,300 Bitcoin that we're not going to get $10,000, $12,000, $15,000 Bitcoin first before we go down to 1300 So this is a stomach churning year as far as owning your crypto and playing the markets. It's one of the reasons I say that trading or at least swing trading is a survival skill in this market <laughs> because <laughs> that's how you, you know, it's how you, you cope with the feelings of dealing with it, of being in it, you know? So that, that's just what I wanted to interject with that. Now, uh, Bill, can I just so say something on that? Oh, go ahead. Sure. It's really amazing. Actually, Aura, you just mentioned that September last year that you saw these prices dropping and that's exactly at that mm -hmm. time when we came out of, out of that. And we also said at that point, we did the webinar, I don't know, somewhere in September, 19 September or something. But this is very interesting, Aura, that what you are mentioning. 
I've always said that I'm not willing to call the low, even with this now. Uh, we could go down to 3,000, then we could go back up to 10,000, somewhere around there. We're still working on that. But then mm -hmm. there's a possibility that we do come down and then touch the low of 1.3. So you're right. Uh, we actually see the same data, actually. Because if we go to 3,000 now, guys, be very careful. And we then go up. Be prepared that there could be a lower low. Whereas, I believe that if we go down to 1285, somewhere in that region, then we, will, then we won't come, come down. I see around... That'll be one, bottom. Yeah, that's, that's the, the bottom. bottom. Yeah. yeah, that's the that's bottom. That's finally the bottom. Yeah, so it's yeah. interesting that we actually see the same kind of data. We just don't know the cycle. But one interesting yeah. thing that I want to give you guys here today is that my cycle analysis point to, listen to this, to not about nine o'clock, nine o'clock, nine forty-five, somewhere in that region on Friday morning, South uh, American time, New York time, as the low for Bitcoin. Hmm. Some news are going to be announced that will push the world stock markets up. Now, remember, this ten percent gain that we had overnight is a fake breakout. It's a reaction, in my opinion, mm -hmm. to the the Fed mm -hmm. and who knows who just. Infusing buying money. everything. That's yeah. it. Just buying. <laughs> the Fed so this, buying everything. This is a good sign. And I think, uh, Bill, when you and I spoke, I said, I'm waiting for that 10% pull, pull up. And then comes a plunge. That plunge will coincide with the drop in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. But the low point, according to me now and my analysis, is Friday between 9 and 9.45. It could be a little bit earlier. AM or PM, even, Marius. Uh, AM in the morning. It yeah, looks to okay. me like somebody is going to come out on Friday morning, American time, and announce a big stimulus package. And that pushes yeah. the world stock markets back up again. Just, just for reference. Can... Okay. Just over to you. Yeah, but No, that's fantastic. I, I don't have a time exact on it, but that's what they've been doing. If you look at every Friday, you know, sort of they're just keep trying to keep the mm -hmm. ball from crashing through the floor for another week they're like buying a week here and a week there mm -hmm. until they're buying every the, their program of buying all the stocks directly get, gets in place and is in gear because it does take them a little while to actually put those things in motion and this is also what i've been saying in my channel is that they're going to buy everything and that's what they're going to do and the stock markets will reinflate to all-time highs what we're that's why we're going to see these these this like the, these markets are acting like a drunken sailor. I mean, it's like making everybody's stomach churn is what we're going to be experiencing. And I, uh, and the other thing that the next thing to watch for is bonds. Bonds will probably skyrocket and then crash obscenely like to low levels. So we're, we're witnessing the implosion of a market that is highly digital, highly leveraged, highly fictional. So the unraveling of it is so it's like this piece starts going flying off and then that gear comes loose it's like watching an engine come flying apart that's really what we're experiencing so i i it's good to hear your time actual time because i i am getting those lows i can't say you know i i get some date ranges but i'm not again like you said nobody's perfect nobody has everything it's that's we're not god right god has that information so it's 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 interesting that we have very good information that dovetails in this in this way. And I think Marius even, you know, from past webinars has indicated there are some price targets in the bond market that Marius, if you wanted to speak to that, that if we hit these specific price targets, it's game over. Yeah. We're hitting them. I guarantee it. <laughs> I don't that, know what they is, are. Yeah, that is true, Bill. Remember on the last webinar that I did last week, mm -hmm. I said that the bond market, uh, let's say, for example, if you look at the U.S. government bonds, the 10-year yield, if, uh, I said it's going to go down to 0 0.032. And people thought I was crazy. And guess what? Right. Just yesterday or the day before, it hit that exact target. So what we now see is that it's going to go upwards now first, and then it's going to start dropping again. Mm -hmm. But... Um, but in my data, what it shows, or you may be a little bit different, but I show that we go up now with the bond market, just short term now, and then it comes back and it drops again to around about 25 cents. You know, specifically now the US government bond, the 10-year 10 10 year yield. Yeah, and, the then, ten year. and then the government comes in and saves the day and the bond market goes back up. 
So they actually come and save it. So this is what we show in our, our data at the moment. You're probably right, because that is the big one that implodes everything is the bond market and they are willing to buy everything. So why mm -hmm. wouldn't they buy the bonds too? That makes perfect sense. Just the volatility of it is where we're, Correct. you know, that's why it's a little dangerous when I, when people want to make trades or short markets, I did have someone who shorted silver because I, I was seeing it go down to 11 on the paper market and he did really well shorting that, but it is dangerous because of those quick ups and downs that you're referring to. And the fact that, this is, you know, they're, they they have cheats for the game, right? So it doesn't operate the way it should. <laughs> and that's kind of on purpose to trick people and to, to mess them up. So I agree with the laddered buy strategy. I also really caution people to be very careful because at any time they could do a fake out on the market. They could just change their plan, actually, because that's that's basically where we're at. No, agree, hundred yeah, percent. Absolutely, Bill. I just want to say one more thing, uh, just before my yes. voice actually goes out. Remember, this drop that I'm talking about now uh, could potentially be the bottom of, uh, let's say, Friday USA time. But then I see we go up a little bit, up, 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 as they try and save the world markets, and then comes another drop. So just remember that, guys. There's a, there's another drop after that. That won't be in the bonds? final drop. No, sorry, I'm talking, sorry I'm talking about Bitcoin. So I'm talking about Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin. And, uh, but that also happens in bonds or, you know, where the bond, the 10 year yield goes up, it goes back up and then it comes for a second drop, but the second drop is not as low. Bitcoin may go the same level or it may go lower, slightly lower. Now, this is the good news. Remember this, what I have discovered in Bitcoin is that Bitcoin is very forgiving. It's, it's a fantastic coin, really. I, I've often told the story and many of you haven't heard it really, but some of you have. Remember, before I got into Bitcoin, I woke up one morning, walked into the, from the bedroom into the bathroom, and I, before I got in the shower, I just, luckily I had my clothes on, but I had this vision of an angel just standing with his wing, and I saw the Bitcoin chart, and the angel with his left wing was kind of like protecting the downside. And that image has always stuck in my mind. And what we are seeing here now, this drop, if you look at the angel, is the angel's left wing. And I've saw, I saw this three years ago. And it's like the angel's, you know, the tip of the angel's wing is kind of 1285, 1867, somewhere around there. You know, more or less, you don't have to get it accurate, you know. Mm -hmm. But from there onwards, and I saw this about three years ago, we have a, a move upwards. But remember the tip of the angel's wing. If you imagine now Bitcoin goes down, and it has one more move up and then comes down again, like the tip of an angel's wing, the tip of a bird. And then from there on, if you look at the outer tip of a bird, it goes up in stages. Up, 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 back to 10,000. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, when we have this drop, I'm not willing to say this is the final drop unless we drop to about 1285. Similar to what Aura is saying, actually. Over to you, Bill. Yeah. I'll stop talking. I want to hear from Aura. Oh, really. No worries. Well, no, I just want to answer that, which is that I agree with the way you're looking, with the way you see it. And it sort of is an angelic protection because it's allowing people to get in, right? It's getting people the opportunity to have this life-changing goals, these life-changing gains from crypto. And if you buy in on, on these dips or even really anything under $5,000, you're going to have your life change and it's really going to be a huge protection, even if you just buy it and hold it, right? So... But I do see, and I know you're, you're, you're describing the, the shape of a wing of an angel, but when Bitcoin does really start to take off, once uh, after that blow is done, and we, it may, you know, of course, everything, nothing goes up in a straight line. There's always some waves on the way up, but there's going to be a moment where it's just vertical. It's going to go up a lot, a lot, a lot. That edge of that wing is a long way of up before we get a break in it, once it really starts taking off. So there's going to be a moment where um, institutions are piling in, people are piling, people are not going to be able to get it. This is actually in the Bitcoin channeling that I did that, um, that that's going to happen. So we do want to make sure that we're completely in the market after that or at that, you know, $1,300, $1,400 level. You just want to be as in it as you can. And of course, hopefully you all have your silver as well, because those things are both incredibly valuable to the future for us. So mm -hmm. I see it similarly is basically what I'm saying. 
No, uh, I think that you guys have been pretty, your calls have been really very, very close um, over the last year, year and a half that I've been following both of you. So I think that's a good indication that mm -hmm. the information is fairly accurate. Um, so given that we've got this potential bottom that we have yet to see at say 1285, 1300, um, and I, I, you know, I know we don't like to maybe always use the word, the market is manipulated. Um, but let's say the prices are controlled, um, versus manipulated and, or you're, you know, you've seen, uh, a pretty big increase you know, a, a vertical line in Bitcoin. And Marius, how, are you seeing a similar, a similar situation with Bitcoin in the algorithms as well? Absolutely, Bill. It looks like when I listen to what Aura is saying, that we are actually seeing the same data. Now, remember, my data is a mathematical equation. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we work it out mathematically how things go up and how things go down. Sometimes it doesn't work out because, uh, in my opinion, what has happened with this drop here is uh, something unnatural. And that can sometimes just mm -hmm. break a mathematical equation. But remember what I showed on the webinar last week, Friday or Thursday. I showed that this drop, the pattern that we are forming now could have happened, could have been at a higher level as well. We should have been now at 14,000 and then we have a drop. So it's the same, mm -hmm. the mathematical equation is still the same, but from a lower level. So instead of working from $14 per, as per se, we're working now from six and $7, but the mathematical formula is still the same. The percentages are still the same. Now, price will meet time. It always happens like that. This is why I believe what Aura says is correct, that we are going to go up in April. We will have a spike at some point because that has to come back and realign. Mm -hmm. You know, as per se, because uh, I believe mm -hmm. this is what I said in September. If it happens, it will be an unnatural event. And coronavirus is an unnatural event. It's a natural event, but an unnatural event. The natural event is the failing world stock markets. But the unnatural event pushed it further. So, yes, I do see exactly the same bill. It's okay, fascinating cool. to listen to, to Aura, really. It's, it is yeah, it's it is amazing. interesting um, so to compare to the two. Stuff. Yeah. So, um, Aura, uh, just another question here for you. Um, so could you maybe address um, the war, and I think you addressed it a little bit earlier in your, in the, in your first comments, the war between good and evil, as um, we're seeing it now taking place everywhere, um, and how, that, how the comment as above, so below, um, relates to what's going on in the world today is you know if we if we're seeing a physical war happening here on earth what's going on in the realms that we can't see and how is that impacting us right or potentially going to impact us yeah it is a spiritual war i mean mm -hmm. so what's going on on our own spiritual level like we are physical we live here on earth but we have spiritual elements to us there are other dimensions to us and so we are on a spiritual level fighting a war and so are sort of positive angels and demons you know the positive and negative forces of the universe that battle is going on now you, spoiler alert you know the good guys win right but it's a battle still we still have to go through the battle so yes what's going on in terms we can't hear you so that we can transcend them and overcome them. So this is really bringing it up into people's faces. So this is also something that was, is discussed in the Emerald Tablets of Toth. It's a, mm -hmm. you know, these are ancient texts and he talks about the archons and I mean, I don't know if he uses the word archon, but archon are sort of negative entities or energies that want to keep humans in a fear-based, low vibrational energy, all the seven deadly sins, right? That's what they're trying to market everything to us. That's how, where they try and keep us. And this is, you know, in, 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 this is compatible with what religion says, right? So he refers but, to them as the dark brothers, the dark brothers. Yeah. The seven deadly the sins. Dark brothers. 
yeah so this is this is how they they unleash fear they unleash anger van vanity um you know domination lust all, pride ego all these things are unleashed laziness are unleashed upon us like we're triggered in our weaknesses to pull us down to those levels because we're easy to control in that way but when we refuse to take the bait then we open our hearts and we rise raise ourselves to a higher vibrational level then we can't be controlled and that's essentially what this it's like a it's like a, a wheat from the chafe is going on. It's like a shaking. Mm -hmm. I think this is a biblical metaphor, right? Of all the people being those kernels who are being separated out. Those who have positive, you know, predominantly positive impulses are going to be transcending this dark energy and these dark forces. But those archons feed on our dark energies. They feed on our fears. They feed on our angers. That's what their food is. That's why they have to create so much of it on earth and that's why they're going to do things like roll out a war and roll out um like a lot more uh, global control grid coming down this year that's another part of what's going on that's going to lead up to the um the prices that we're seeing in these markets being um dramatic and making these big dramatic moves so that's that's how i see it is it is a, it's and it is a spiritual battle and ultimately part of what's happening is that this new infrastructure this new global one world system this new global currency this one world order all these things are actual structures that do need to get built out so it's part of the reason it's allowed to unfold in this way people have their free choice right people have to be given the the freedom to choose which way they want to go who they want to serve who they want to be involved you know what world they want to be part of and also that infrastructure has to get built out so that it can ultimately be taken over by the, the brothers of light, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, that's what I see happening is like the sort of a final battle is the brothers of light take over the system. But I can't tell you exactly when that's happening. It's just what I see. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think you did a pretty good job of calling out to your Patreon members um, and I think you started even in 2019, giving us a heads up that the control grid is coming down. Right. You know, once, and I think the date you even gave us was as of January 1st, it's game on. And yeah. the, the control grid goes into place and how and what are we doing to prepare for the inevitable to protect, um, you know, our freedom, to protect our privacy. And ultimately at the end of the day, if we're in cryptos, we're in cryptos because we we believe that at some point there will be windfall profits associated with it. And how do we protect our, our you know our financial future? Um, do you still how do so now we're three months into 2020? I I definitely feel it. What do you see for the rest of the year? So there's what the dark forces are planning and the plans that they're rolling out and then there's what's going to happen and what's going on with the people right and the individual people mm -hmm. so i mean i so i have like a list of things and i'm you know just want to say this like these might sound scary but we also have the opportunity to create the opposite ourselves okay so it's just information that we can use to move things in the direction for ourselves and the people we care about and we want to be tied up with that teamed up with that it's important to know this for so even though they're doing all these things people are going to be joining together we're going to get more and more unity in community and groups of people who believe the same things and that is kind of the next stage of it it's one of the things i didn't want to project too far in advance previously because you know people sometimes need uh to see what's happening before they recognize that well yeah that's probably a good idea to team up and be part of a community so <laughs> <laughs> i'm so, laughing because how much more do you need to see right now? well yeah now it's pretty clear but so the thing is that um those who are in position in crypto to make a lot of money and to do really well are are on point they're 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 spiritually charged with helping to rebuild right to create something that is going to be more sustainable more collectively collectively um humane right <laughs> this system we live in right now isn't so the things that they're trying to do and, and th these things that they're trying to do are going to drive people towards each other and so what we're going to see is that they're going to be doing they're going to be shutting down the banks right 
They're going to be, um, there's going to be military occupation in the streets. They're going to be trying to keep people indoors. By the way, there's no, nothing that says that going outdoors is bad for COVID-19. You can go outside and breathe fresh air. You're not going to catch COVID-19 from the air, right? You could catch it if you're in a, a gathering of a lot of people, you know, at, uh, you know, the local grocery store, right? Shopping, but you're much safer going outdoors and it's a good idea to take a walk every day. It's good for your immune system. So they're going to be trying to scare people into their homes. There's that. And part of the reason that they're doing this is because if you were to start talking to your neighbor and you guys were to chat, then you'd have people spreading information. And then you have a whole neighborhood of people who are working together and now they've lost that neighborhood, right? They can't control that neighborhood because that neighborhood's taking care of each other. So that's kind of why that goes that way. But, um, you know, they're good. Then they're going to implode these markets and by buying everything and making it pure fiction. And then, you know, eventually they're going to, um, create the reset of all money, which is this global, um, meeting of the heads of state where they create this new value and it will be some kind of gold backed probably thing. Um, all the fiat currencies will continue to exist for, uh, for a while, maybe even forever. Um, but they're going to create a global currency, a global, that's going to be sort of that yardstick of value that I'm seeing. They're going to, um, um, they're going to, they're trying to create a global one world order, a one world government right now. What's going on with all these businesses are being thrown, you know, shut down basically because they have to shut because of the virus, right? They're all being told people aren't going to shop and all this thing. So they're going to give loans to those people that have those companies so that now those company owners are slaves to the debt system, but they, um, they're consolidating all the power of all the transactions into small hands, right? Into a few corporate hands like Amazon and, you know, just these smaller mm -hmm. few companies. The two big to fail banks. Yeah. Well, yeah. Some of them are going to yeah, fail. At some yeah, point. At some yeah. point. But they're consolidating it into their control grid so that now it's like you need something. You want to eat something? Well, you can only call Grubhub or Postmates and there's no other way. You can't call your local restaurant anymore. They're, um, you want to order something, you can only call Amazon, right? Maybe some eBay still. So they're trying to consolidate this because then they can control the flow of, um, of resources, right? And not just money, but also the things that are supposed to be shipped mm -hmm. to us around the world. So, and there's lots and lots of disruption of that as well. So we're gonna be better off when we team up with our neighbors and our people in our community and we have sharing of resources, trading of resources, growing of food, um, mutual benefit, right? Creating, creating mutual, you know, like uh, community gardens where there's growing going on, but also like, hey, I have a lot of tomatoes and you've got some lemons, let's trade. That sort of thing is, they can't control it. They can't, they're gonna sort of try, but they can't, they're not gonna be able to. And so these are the things that are cropping up. These are the things that are growing. And in fact, and also places where so in fact, those communities where people are strong and working together and, and doing these things mutually are going to flourish. They're going to do really well. And more of those communities will be in our agricultural environments because it's just more possible to do this stuff in ag and cities, you know, I mean, it's so mm -hmm. easy for them to control large populations in big cities. So that's what's going to be the successes, right, that are going to come out of this. And also those smaller communities are going to start taking crypto, start using crypto for transactions, most predominantly Bitcoin cash and some Litecoin. Bitcoin obviously is harder to use for transactions, but they're going to, and there will be a regional currency sometimes that people are using, but cryptos are going to really be used. And also the holding of larger sums of crypto is going to be like, what's going to end up happening is a lot of people who are uh, really successful in crypto are going to be able to bank their own community and create their own like environment system that, mm -hmm. and, and we're going to end up with templates. People are going to come up with templates as to how to do this. That is sustainable and mutually supportive. Okay. That is not the exploitative kind of system that we have now. Not that there won't ever be problems, but we're going to really learn how to actually work together and live together in real communities of people. So that's the good stuff that's coming out of it. And this is all that summer solstice energy is like real community. True community is circ oops, circular, right? It is shaped in a circle. 
that everyone is around the circle and, and it's strong as a circle and everyone is unified and working together. And it's not these pyramid structures, right? The pyramid shapes that are all the Illuminati structures with one power at the top. So real human communities have to be, and a circle is a feminine shape. It's a female shape. It's a community type shape. It's, it's tied to the summer solstice degree. But if they can keep us in fear and keep us divided at the bottom of the pyramid, then they have control over your circle. So this is about us creating real circles mm -hmm. of, with real human values and walking away from the destruction of human Agre values. Agree. I actually had a conversation yesterday with somebody that Marius and you and I know. Um, and we were talking and he said he was going to spend a hundred. He said, I'm, Bill, I'm going to take a couple hundred bucks. I'm going to invite all my neighbors into the house one, after, one evening, one afternoon. And I'm going to explain what cryptocurrencies are. And I'm going to explain how to open a wallet and actually how to go on Coinbase and buy some coins. He said, because I have a vested interest in this because I okay. want to, that tipping point to happen sooner rather than later where more people are involved in, you know, the, that, you know, mass adoption is yet to come, but that he's trying to help do his part to push adoption in his own community. And I thought, he goes, you know, it's only going to cost me a couple hundred bucks. And he goes, listen, if I get one person to buy Bitcoin and use a wallet, it's a win-win. Yeah, that's his new community, right? He's built himself yeah, a community yeah. that way. He's, he's now, starting to build himself a community. Yeah. And, and these are going to be extremely successful, these groups of people. But we're going, so what they're trying to do also is they're going to try and create one world government. And it's not going to work out the way they plan. You're going to, the United States is going to split up. There's going to be a, like battles in the States. People are going to, people are going to, like you can't leave people locked in their homes for a year, a year and a half mm -hmm. without them losing their ever loving minds. Right. And it's just really taking up arms and you're going to see groups of parts of the country splitting off. And, and, and I'm talking specifically the United States, but because, you know, we're like a big, umbrella of tribes but all over the world this is going to happen you're going to see these movements where people are breaking off and saying we don't want none of your stinking system we don't like it right and that's and some will do better than others but those that are using cryptocurrencies are going to really thrive and this is a lot of what the changes are that are coming um over this next year to two years is these kinds of things and and really a lot of a lot of hinky business a lot of Lot, you know, manipulation lies of elections mm -hmm. because they're trying to um, install their permanent people. Okay. I do see Trump being reinstated, elected, however you want to call it, but he's not finishing that term because it, that doesn't serve their ultimate agenda. They're trying to get it to a point where they can get their permanent dictator in place. So let's say potentially he's out by 2023. Um, he'll Marius. Be out by then. I see maybe two years. Yeah. Okay. So, Marius, correct me if I'm wrong, but your algorithms have seen something in the future that is rather yeah. big as well. Yeah, Bill, uh, from a mathematical perspective and an algorithmic cycle perspective, if I look back at the American presidency, and remember, I was involved in uh, just a disclosure, I was involved in the Donald Trump campaign from an Australian perspective, and that's why I took so much heat on Twitter, you know, as soon as people knew that I'm supporting Donald Trump, which I didn't really, you know, we were just helping, you know, uh, yeah. you know, the trolls were out and they're still out to get me, you know, so just full disclosure, <laughs> we were helping before I really got into Bitcoin. So anyway, we saw in my algorithmic data that Donald Trump is going to win the election, but just, but now what we see is that by the year 2023, is that something happens. We don't know what it is. Remember, we can see the event. The same as what we saw the event where Bitcoin starts dropping now, we saw it in September, we just don't know when. And uh, we should have been a little bit more alert and I kind of like forgot about it. But we shouldn't forget about it. We should put it in a calendar and remember this. But by the year 2023, somewhere in 2023, I would say after the, the latter part of the year, Something happens in the presidency. We don't know what it is. Now, we can speculate and say that Donald Trump gets shot because Kennedy got shot. Uh, what's the other guy? Link Lincoln got killed. 
And Donald Trump kind of is he's in the same category. If you look at it mathematically on an algorithmic basis, he can die, he can get impeached. Oh, there's so many things. Who knows what these people will do you know, to get yeah. him out? But then we also see the, the Dow Jones, if it stays in this format, it goes up to about 30,000 Dow. And uh, around about 2023, it goes to 60,000 Dow. And then there's a major change in the world, a major change. Now, with regard to Bitcoin, from now till that time, uh, just order what we see as an algorith algorithmic cycle, we see the reason I say that Bitcoin is going to go up to 89,000 and then to 350,000 is because I see in my data that, they, that people start trading Bitcoin in $100, $100 segments. Like they would go and make a bid and buy Bitcoin at 20500 not $20,512.25. It goes up to, I want to buy Bitcoin at 30400 30600 30800 And And every single day, there's, during a day, you'll see $100 jumps. And then there's multiple jumps in one day, multiple of them, where Bitcoin just suddenly jumps up $1,000. And there's a few jumps where Bitcoin in one day goes up 4,000 just suddenly out of nowhere for no reason at all. It defies technical analysis. It just goes 4,000 because people start getting, they say, I missed the boat at buying Bitcoin at 10,000. Now it's 50,000. I'm going to bid 54,000 and the bid gets taken. So it jumps up 4,000. And then guys, remember in 2017, probably the first one in the world that came out with this. And I said that I see Bitcoin dropping by 20,000 in one day, 20,000 in one day. There's one point where Bitcoin drops 60,000 in one day. Now that 20,000 is most likely when Bitcoin hits approximately. And I'm just making a guess here. We don't know. I can see, I can see the numbers, but I just don't know when. Closer to the time, we can identify it. But I would probably say, yeah, around about 45, 48,000, it drops by 20,000. But then it comes back very strong again, exactly what we have now. Bitcoin dropped from 10,000 to 4,000. Okay, think about this now. It's not impossible to drop from 40,000 to 20,000. It seems big. So this is why I say, if I look at that data bill, that I believe that Bitcoin is going to go up. Right. But one caution that I want to give everybody here is, stop focusing on where the high is. You can make insane money at these levels. Don't worry yep. about the price of the US dollar for Bitcoin because you've got no control over it. The things that you've got no control over, move it out of your mind, forget about it. Focus on what you can control. You can control the profit that you make. Over to you, Bill. Thank you, Marius. Yeah, um, interesting that you guys both see some event 2023. Um, as related to the president. Yeah. So we'll and, see. And remember, Bill, I never knew about Aura at that time in 2017 when we made that no. prediction. Oh, I know, 100%. That, yeah, so, yeah. and this was way back yeah. in 2017. Mm -hmm. And I also see that Donald Trump wins the election. And look, guys, this is non political. Please, if you're a Democrat or a Republican, don't worry about it. You know, it's non political. But we see that Donald Trump, well, we don't know if he wins or if they push him in or whatever. You know, we don't know. But we just see that he somehow he gets back in office. Somehow he, he gets back in office. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Over to you, Bill. <laughs> Aura, you, any comments? Yeah. yeah, I have one thought that I wanted to add to that, which is, you know, those price levels, they all sound realistic to me. And of course, Bitcoin has dropped 50%, right? It just dropped 50% last week. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it could do it at $200,000. But the um the thing one thing i want to add to this that my report owners know because it's in my every report i put out this was an article that i wrote on steam it um in 2017 which is that bitcoin cash will overtake bitcoin eventually okay and i have levels i have levels that i was shown that it's gonna make on its way to overtaking bitcoin so if you want bitcoin a lot of bitcoin buy some bitcoin cash but <laughs> do it now but um it's you know that's gonna start happening somewhere between that, that like you're saying 80,000 to 300,000, that's about when the, the race is gonna get really heated between those two coins. 
And so Marius, or from a time, a time timing standpoint, you know, I know it's hard to predict timing. Right. You think 2021? For which? When, well, Marius, I think you just, we've discussed, you know, you're looking at potentially 89,000 in 2021, if I'm not mistaken. Absolutely, Bill. What happens now is that by the latter part of this year is when we call it, uh, or we call it catapult one, catapult two, catapult number three. Believe it or not, people don't understand this, but even with this drop, this is a catapult. How do you put a catapult in to propel it forward? Remember this, guys. You put a big rock in. Think about medieval. They put the rock in, they pull it back, they pull it back. And this is just a pullback. And then they hit the catapult. Remember catapult number one, we predicted that spot on to the dollar to the date. And then we said catapult number two is now in the works. And that started on 18 December, 2019. Now the catapult, I don't know, the catapult missed the, <laughs> missed the castle. But the catapult <laughs> went up and then the catapult dropped. But that's the pullback. And then, so we have catapult number two. Catapult number two is not the big one. The big one, catapult and we haven't left three. catapult two yet. We catapult number two is not done yet, no, no, and then no, catapult no. number three starts in the latter part of the year, and it goes up till the year 2021, and mm. in 2021 probably I dates are just approximate, you know, dates you can't predict that anymore. I don't know, or maybe you can, but more or less, you know. Uh, Better, and I think yeah. people just need to need to have a uh, a bit of a broader idea of dates because. That's another thing that you are not in control of, date and right. price. You're not in control of that. But let's say by the latter part of 2021, since by the end of this year for 12 months, we just go up, up, up. That's a huge catapult. And this is how we see that uh, bill. And Aura, just your question or, or your comment on Bitcoin Cash. Way back before we even knew you, I, I told my subscribers, there's uh, three or four or five coins. Well, five was Bitcoin, so there's four coins. The top top one we said was Ethereum, but Bitcoin Cash is in there too. Now, we couldn't make a distinction between the four, which one is the best, but any one of them is actually a really good one. And we also said that we see Bitcoin Cash going back to extreme high levels. But where Bitcoin Cash overtakes Bitcoin, I didn't know that, but it's something that we, this is why it's so valuable to spread your wings, guys. Don't, yeah. don't just go to YouTube and listen to things. Do research, listen to aura, listen to all these things and let your soul take the information in and you can analyze that data. This is why I love you, Aura. It's awesome. <laughs> love you too. <laughs> it's, it's really love, great. Love fast here. Yeah, but it's really, it's great because it is difficult to find people who see it in a similar way because a lot of what I'm seeing is very contrarian. And like you, I get, you know, look, if you don't have trolls, you're not doing something right. So, you know, like you, I get a lot of people like, that's crazy. I've had people come back and be like, you said this was going to happen. I thought you were nuts. And now it happened. And I'm like, yeah, I know I'm willing to make myself look nuts because I just report what I get. It's, I'm just a messenger. Right. So, and the same with you. So it's, it is really nice to, and also you fill in some of the gaps. Right. And I, and I can tell you that I, I will get dates as we get closer. The thing with Bitcoin Cash is that it's a it's hard to distinct distinguish the two because of the fact that you know technically Bitcoin Cash should have the right to call itself Bitcoin because it is closest to the vision of the white paper, right? So when that battle is happening, it's going to get really uh, tricky. But I, I have levels. I just know levels that it's going to hit along the way, like you know point whatever of a Bitcoin to, you know, in back and forth as they're, as they're fighting it out, but it's going to be a slow fight. It's not going to happen like in 10 minutes, it'll take a, probably a year, year and a half to, to really mm -hmm. uh, fully, you know, ramp up. But, uh, but yeah. And yeah, that's it. Back to Bill. Okay. Thank you. Well, guys, we've been um, chatting now for about an hour and 15 minutes and it's six fifteen, and would you guys like to go to some live questions and take some of the um, questions from the um, the members that are um, that have joined us, Marius? Sure. 
Oh, he's got his yeah, hand. yeah, ab absolutely. I think, uh, did you want me to unmute everybody, or are you gonna? So if you could, you yeah, know, just go ahead and unmute everybody, and just then before... um, for the members that are on the line, um, you know, go ahead and I um, feel just, free just to ask a question. Sorry, not to break in. I just wanted to say quickly before um, we go to the questions, I just want to give an offer to the group and like allow Bill to put the links into the chat box so that people can, can find this stuff. That is that is that okay for me to do that? Absolutely, Aura. Please put your information in there. Anybody that wants to get in touch with Aura, click on those links. You can get in touch with her there. Okay, okay. so I'll drop those into the um, dialogue box. But just before we go to questions, I have one more question for each of you guys. Okay. Okay. Aura, if you could only hold one coin in your wallet, what would it be? That's really tough. I mean, I I, I would say Bitcoin Cash, but there is one other coin that's probably going to make even, especially in the near closer term, that will make better gains, and that's Digibyte. Mm hmm. Okay. Marius, same question. If you could only hold one coin in your wallet, what would it be? Bill, can you remember what coin I said will go up the most? Digibyte. Yeah, Digibyte. <laughs> yeah. Or are yeah. you are so scary. <laughs> so are you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just want to make one quick thing, which is the two things that I have for you, your members, is I do have a, a free PDF, which is virus protection, and it's homeopathic, which works on the molecular level of your body, so it'll help keep you healthy, apart from like the, the standard of taking a lot of vitamin C and vitamin D. That's a free thing, so Bill will drop that link into the chat box, so you guys can just sign up and get that, and that will give you more updates about what I'm doing. And then the other thing is, if you want to subscribe to my report, Bill has a link for that and you guys can get 20% off for the next 24 hours if you sign up and that would be um, just use the code M20, M for Marius 20. So Bill will put those links in the description box. You guys can take advantage of both of those things, either both, either way. So that's all with that. Was there something else? Did Bill just ask me another question? I'm not sure. No, just wanted, just was, if, what was your favorite coin? Yeah, I think Digibyte is going to be the world's best coin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not yeah, going to disagree um, with and you. Let me, let me just quickly finalize on that just for, the, for new people or as people who listen to this. What we've always said is that you need to have four coins. Those four coins are Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, well, five, XRP, Digibyte, and Litecoin. Now, what we do is, and then obviously you've got Bitcoin. So you trade, you keep on trading Bitcoin. When you make the profit out of Bitcoin, you move it into Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Litecoin, or Digibyte, or XRP if you want. But long term, we see uh, Litecoin not doing that well. Okay, so we actually get rid of Litecoin at some point. XRP, when XRP has its first move, we sell. And it will go up for 14 days astronomically. Then you sell. You get out of XRP, you never ever go back. And then we yep. leave only, we keep Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Digibyte. I hope that makes sense. That's very similar. I've been telling people that there's a point at which it's not safe to have XRP because it's getting locked down into the banking system somehow. Mm -hmm. So there will be a price level actually where you want to be out completely of Bitcoin, of XRP completely. So, but I agree. And I didn't have the 14 days of upward movement. That's a good clue also. So, but there is a, there's, yes, I agree with selling out of Ripple. You do want to get out of it. Yeah, it's about 14 to 21 days max in that range, but right. you'll see it will just go up and up and up and never come back. And when you, right. and you know, we always say to our members order, we say, sell the spike, never buy the spike. No. Sell the spike. When you, when you are up and you make that profit, take the profit. Don't wait. That's right. Um, Bill, with regard to people on the call, yeah. I think I'm not going to unmute everybody. Otherwise, we're going to have a lot of noises. If people can just raise their hand, okay. and uh, we'll take them from the top to the bottom, if that's okay. Thank you that for that link great. as well, Aura, you know. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. To and I'll, I'll download the other one. So, guys, if you've got any questions, um, raise your hand. And oh, uh, there we go. Well, yeah, what we mean with raise your hand, uh, just go in on Zoom. Uh, you know, like Queen of Sheba, she just put her hand up. It's like a little blue hand. Not physically raise your hand, if, if that's okay. 
Right. So she's got her hand up there. And okay, then we've queen. got, so Queen of Sheba's, go ahead. Hi. Hi. Thank you, Aura. Thank you so much for coming on. And Marius, as always, fantastic to see, hear you both. Um, what's going on? Now, I agree with you, Marius. I think the coronavirus is being overhyped and used as a cover for some major changes they're putting, they're putting through. Now, do you think, Aura, this is the start of that global the way they're closing businesses, this is unprecedented. The global shutdown of businesses and every freedom we've ever had. I get the feeling we will never be the same society again. We won't. This is, this is really the end of an old era. Yeah. So when the virus was in the news, I was like, I better go out and eat in all the nicest restaurants while I still can. <laughs> no, I mean, I really knew that it was not going to be available in the same way after that and it's unfortunate it doesn't mean we're never going to be able to eat at good restaurants again but it is a big change to our whole entire way of life and we are going to start rebuilding something brand new we're going to see the best of people come out of this the best in people we're going to see some incredible inventions and innovations coming out they're already starting it's going to be really exciting as a renaissance in some ways even though you know yeah. there's the grief of the end of our old way of life as well I've always read that from the spiritual perspective, we, by 2032, the world will be a better spiritual place. And I think, you know, the old has to die and break down before we get to that. So is this it then, the breakdown, the breaking of everything we have ever known? Yes, this is it. It's, it's gone, actually. It's never, ever coming back. It doesn't mean that the breakdown happens overnight. It's a long, slow grind yeah. and with sudden bursts of change and innovation and, you know, stuff happening. So it's, you know, there's nothing boring about being alive today. <laughs> but, but do you think, do you think what they've done is globally shut down all businesses? I mean, every single business. Do you think they will open again a bit or not? Or is this it? Is this a global clampdown? They're going to try and keep everyone locked up for 18 months or longer. Yeah. They're going to try and keep people in their homes in fear of this virus for over a year. Now, they do have like this official, you know, remedy that they're working on, that, that there's studies in New York. It's really simple. Actually, all you really need to do is get quinine, which is in uh, tonic water. And it, it's quinine in a Z-pack, which is an antibiotic, series of antibiotics. And you can buy over-the-counter Mexican antibiotics on Amazon right now still and eBay. But those two things, theoretically, are supposed to kill the virus scientifically. I don't, I mean, I would rather use homeopathy. It's cheaper and more effective and it doesn't kill your natural So, So, you know, in terms of livelihoods, what are people going to do? What's going to happen there? I can't hear you. So, sorry, also, Aura, we, we just missed you there for a second. We lost you. Sorry, so, am, I, am I back? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Um, universal income. They're going to give everyone a universal income. All these businesses that are allowed to stay in business are going to be given loans, which is again, loan sharkery, right? It's so that they can control the businesses and own their, their lives and everything they do. And also if you take the universal income, they're going to use information on you to control you and to, you know, own you basically. Yeah. So but, but they, I, I think they're also, are they also actually destroying that, that layer of middle layer of wealth? Like people have buy to let properties or a chiropractic business or a small hotel. Are they just going to destroy that to them? It's just collateral damage, isn't it? They don't care. Yeah, of course. So that they can collapse more of the power into their hands, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to let people be in business if they allow them to be in business. That's what they want. Government, um, the president just signed a law last week allowing because of wartime, you know, it's a wartime. It's wartime powers act. Yeah. So he can take over any business. The government can take over any business that exists in the country right now. They can just say you're working for us now because we need your work to help us in our fight against COVID-19. So, oh, I have one thing I wanted to tell you about COVID-19. That's really fascinating. A, this was sent to me by one of the patrons and it's really an interesting thing. So COVID-19 is actually code. It's a number. And um, I'm going to read the, um, it's a, it's a Greek number. Let's see if I can find it. The Greek number is, oh my God, I'm not finding it. I, I will tell you what it means. And if I can find it while I'm looking. Um, 
it means it actually equates to the 606, the number 606, that's what it adds up to. And it, which is, if any of you are um, computer people out there, that is the reset command on a computer is 606, the 606 command. So they're telling us yes. with COVID-19, it is literally mm -hmm. the way they are resetting the system. It was a patented drug. It is a bioweapon. There are all kinds of bio, there are all kinds of weapons, Neptunian weapons being used against us right now from microwaves from 5g to spores to viruses to you know other things that chemtrails. are like chemtrails neptunian things you know drugs pharmaceuticals neptunian things that are um, very small particles right very very little that's very neptunian and in the air and fog and stuff like that it's confused and lying so this is the reset this is how they're doing the reset it's just a whole question then hey, I'll, I'll excuse me Okay, just one sec, just one, just shout I'm sorry. Hey, Marius, I don't have access to chat. Uh, yeah, Bill, I don't think I set up the chat in this specific one, so there is no chat. Okay, oh. so um, that's, a, my, I was going to drop the link there. into chat. That's okay, no worries. I, I forgot so, about that, yeah. I'm sure everybody will be interested in this question as well. So, Aura, if they are, if they're, what they started is a global clampdown and sucking the the money from you know channeling into the uh, fewer hands the corporate hands will they allow us to benefit from profit from gold silver and cryptos do you think they'll try and grab that from the average joe like us well if you ha have your hands on your gold and silver that's yours they can't take it there are only certain coins they're going to be able to take mostly the newer ones and mostly the ones that are minted by your own government right so having foreign coins is safer having coins that are collectible technically collectible is safer so those coins yeah they may try and take that stuff but i don't actually see that sort of gold silver confiscation thing being very effective and successful because of the community thing that i'm seeing happen and the fact that people will trade it back and forth with each other and they can't control that um but the uh the other part of it is crypto. Yes, there will be a period of time. In fact, I just got this message this morning that there's going to be a period of time where they will shut down all the exchanges, probably last about two weeks when they shut down banks. So there's going to be like people can't get in and out. And we did have a lot of strategy in my group where we all were setting up LLCs and we were working with John Singleton. So people have legal protection with uh, LLC entities. So it, you have to have the right legal structure to protect yourself, to be able to hold on to your crypto. Of course you can keep your wallets anonymous and they won't be able to get that from you, but um, it's good to have legal ways to get in and out of your crypto as well. Cool, thank you. Okay, great, thank you. Thank uh, you let's Shanta. just go through all those questions, Bill. We're gonna ask one question from Jackie, one from Sabina, yeah. and then one from Tommy Slavik. So Jackie, please go ahead. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So one question I had was that since there's a lot of hyperinflation going on right now, and I know um, Marius had mentioned about taking the profits in some coins and transitioning, transitioning them to others. How can we use that profit into the dollar bill since it's going to be hyperinflated? It's so this is a we haven't even started hyperinflation yet it's gonna hit really hard right now we're in deflation and hyperinflation is still probably a couple months out but you're going to you can the, the simple thing you can do is place your um it, <laughs> this is complicated and this is what we worked with john singleton to solve for my yeah opinion. it's 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 not a quick answer it's not as it's not yeah it's not an easy answer you, you can put your money into stable coins and go in and out of Coinbase if you're a US citizen with your stable coins. So don't buy coins, cryptos on, on Coinbase. Just buy stable coins into Coinbase, then send your stable coins to your wallet and buy your coins there. Or, and then when you want to take cash out, send your stable coins, your USDT or whatever, onto Coinbase and then turn that stable coin into dollars and send that to your bank account or whatever currency you're in and send it to your bank account. That's one way you can do it without triggering a tax event for yourself, for, according to John Singleton. But that's yeah, that, the best that's, a, that's a good point. Uh, I just want to make one comment quickly there, uh, Aura, what we've been teaching our people. 
Number one, when you invest in cryptos, you don't put all your money in cryptos. You must have a certain percentage in silver, not necessarily gold. Yes. We see silver rising up to $982 an ounce, mathematically. That must eat that. I agree. I agree you 100%. Know? I don't even own any gold. I'm always telling people silver. Absolutely. Exactly. Now, that yeah. is one way how you protect yourself against hyperinflation. Now, remember when we say that Bitcoin is going to go to 89000 you won't be, it's not the value that you will have today. With $89,000, right. you can buy a very nice SUV. But when right. it goes up to $89,000, you'll be able to buy a Ford Focus. So just remember well, that that is hyperinflation. Really. Yeah, except that in the hyperinflation time, all those nice SUVs are also going to come way down in price because nobody exactly. wants anything with foreign parts because you can't get it worked on, right? That's so exactly it, yeah all the price values are going to change. So it's really hard to assess based on those numbers. That's true. That's why you need silver. Absolutely. Cool. Thank you. Next, Marius, we've got Sabina is up next. Yep, Sabina is there we unmuted. Go. Okay. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, a quick question on Bitcoin Cash. It's sitting at about 227 right now. At what uh, point do you consider a good entry point? Anything under 150. When Bitcoin drops, Bitcoin Cash will drop as much or more. If, if the thing with Bitcoin is if it drops and stays down for any length of time, a couple of days or whatever, all the alts bleed even more. So they may drop the same amount as Bitcoin at first. But over the next couple of days, if Bitcoin stays at a low level, they bleed out. And that's why Bitcoin pumps up in value a little bit when it drops it goes it goes a sharp drop then it pumps up because all the alts are throwing all their money into bitcoin for protection so mm -hmm. then the alts will go down more and more so if you wait like two days after bitcoin's drop if it hasn't gone up that's usually when you get it's just sort of like a good rule of thumb timing if you don't have actual dollar targets on all these that's kind of a good time to go pick up coins that you want okay and you both mentioned that um you expect a uh, drop in Bitcoin, which is going to be the leader in yeah. pricing uh, next couple of days. I'm not hearing you. And ne TV. next couple of days, 20, 24 to 48 hours, Marius mentioned. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I actually want to make a prediction and say, uh, probably in the next two or three hours, we're going to have the drop. Because remember, what I think what we're going to do now is we're going to get Bitcoin very close to 6,800, very close to that range. And that will be kind yeah. of like a top. If we do not break through 6,900, then it's mm -hmm. going to drop literally hours from now, probably about two, okay. three hours. But what it I mean is the drop, the drop happens. Oh, okay. So if it doesn't break, I, I work in Bitfinex. So the, the, the prices are more or less, you know, sometimes you get a $50 spread depending on the exchange you look. But on Bitfinex, if it doesn't break through six, nine, let's say 7,000. If we go above 7,000, it's going to go up. But as long as we mm -hmm. don't break 7,000, it's going to come down. And it should come down. The drop should happen in about two hours. Two hours, three mm -hmm. hours, which we mean... In the next 48 hours, it's going to drop severely up till Friday, about eight, nine o'clock. That will be the low, the first low. And then there's a second low as well. So, right. The best strategy is always to have money out so you can buy in on the lows mm -hmm. and money ready to trade so you can sell out on the, on the highs, right? So you're kind yeah. of covered on both sides and then you buy back in when it's down again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Tommy. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Cool. Okay. Uh, first, I just wanted to uh, thank you, Bill, for arranging this uh, this uh, webinar. Oh, no worries. And, uh, a big, very big thank you to both Aura and uh, Marius for doing this. This is very meaningful to me. So valuable information. Anyways. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Uh, my question uh, is to either of the two of you or both uh, regarding Veritasium. And my question would be, when potentially would Veritasium uh, start moving substantially? Well, Aura has spoken quite extensively on this subject. <laughs> yeah, if there's any more yeah. information. Yeah, so I have, I have three videos on Veritasium. Um, yeah. 
two of them are public on YouTube. Uh, the first one of them was a Patreon video, and then I released it when there was more news about Veritasium, because I did predict that in January they were going to go after Veri, and they did. Um, a, a lot of the time range of what. what We can't hear. Right now. Hello. Can you hear me? So, Aura, no, we couldn't. He we couldn't hear anything you just said. I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. Okay. So, Very is gonna. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So in the spring, it's very in is very. So in the next couple of months, there's gonna be some better news on Very. I don't know that it's gonna affect the prices. Just know it is a long-term beneficial coin to have. It's going to be a few years before Very really starts to go where it's meant to go. But it is a phenomenal coin. You absolutely do want to have it. It's going to be used by the government. It's going to be a big part of the financial infrastructure that's being built out. So hold it. Just know you're going to hold it for a long time. Don't expect to be trading it soon. And just to add to that, I think, Aura, you've said in your videos, um, crazy U.S. government will have to go back to Reggie to, for him to explain how to use the coin and the technology because they couldn't figure it out. And so that's basically the reason they had to go steal the coin from him, the technology from him, because they couldn't figure it out. So they still can't figure it out. And they're going to have yeah. to go back to him at the end of the day anyway. Yeah, there's so. no way they can figure it out. They, um, they stole it because it was competition for them. And then they want, now they're going to want to use it and they won't know how. And also John Singleton was saying the same thing that, that legally there's, he had some sort of legal explanation as to why they have to go back to him and the SEC. Now you, we, the people who have Veritasium are creditors of the SEC. So we can go to them and say, we are your creditor. You owe us right. this functionality. There was a Despite it, yeah, fiduciary responsibility to, yeah. yeah. And there was a, this coin profitable. And there was a, a, a a uh, petition online too against them so you know they're gonna have to suck it up eventually about this coin yeah yes it's good but it's not it's it's a lot not, yet. Hold. not yeah. yet yeah yeah does uh does marius have any forecast on that coin on on very not at all or uh, we haven't done a lot of work in that space all we have told people is just simply hold your veritasium we mm -hmm. haven't done a lot of mathematical formulas on that from way back we did and we said that it's a great time just just hold it don't get rid of it and it should only consist a small percentage of your portfolio anyway but think about this if you've got 150 400 500 dollars in that that can easily turn into 20 30 or 40 thousand so it's worth That's it right. just hold it but if your well, portfolio is overly let's say 80 90 percent then it's a, a problem i agree i agree yeah. and for yeah, those wait. people Mem those um, people on the call that remember Cliff High, you know, mm -hmm. Cliff High years ago called out Veritasium as this amazing coin and even saw it at some point going to parity with, um, with Bitcoin. That's right. He did say that. And he's, I think, yeah. I believe he said that right. in a couple of reports. I think he's right too. Yeah. 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 There are well, other coins I don't like that he liked, but I, I, I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, um, Marius, we've got Chris, who's got a, who's got a question. Okay, Marius. Hello. Yes, hello, uh, Audrey, Bill, and Marius. Nice to see y'all on here tonight or this afternoon. Uh, my first question is from Marius, and then I have an astrology question for Aurora. Uh, Marius, why do you like uh, Digibyte? What's your thing with Digibyte? It's not that I like Digibyte. I only look at a perspective from a mathematical equation. If I take all the coins in the world, you know, okay, we can't analyze all of them. Okay. And you have to be very, very careful by not using uh, or by buying. I just want to make the statement here as well, guys. Uh, all these no name brand coins could potentially very quickly disappear. We said so in 2017 and we said, in 2018 as well, we said, come year 2020, uh, over 3,000 coins will just vanish. Boom, That's right. gone. Mm -hmm. And your money will mm -hmm. be gone. Okay, okay. Digibyte is one of them that stays stable. 
people don't realize it's a very old crypto, very well known, very suppressed in price. But from a mathematical equation, you get to like a pinch point in mathematical equations, and then suddenly you just get a burst of price. It's one of the coins that shows us a staggering gain of over 40,000%. As a matter of fact, about 43 to 47,000%, even as high as 56,000%. Now you go and work that out. $15,000 will turn into a million dollars overnight and more. So it's worth it to take a chance. I mean, guys, literally, I'm saying this, if you take 15, not 50,000, one five, 15,000, and buy now on the next low and just hold it, you have the potential without giving financial advice. I'm just saying what we see mathematically to make that staggering gain. And it's not a lot of money really to just put in part of your portfolio, depending on how much you trade. I know some people trade a thousand, some people a million, but do what you can. Well, I shouldn't really say that. I don't want to give anybody financial advice. I'm just saying what we see mathematical equation, Chris. So we would like to hear from Aura what you see then. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you completely on Digibyte. It's, um, you know, it's a, it's like the best coin. And I think that even Michelle White Dove calls Michelle, mm -hmm. calls it her favorite coin. So, I mean, this is commonly, and you know, it's been in my report since I put it out in like 2017, the first report, my favorite five coins, Digibyte is on that list. So is Veritasium. And so, you know, I, I agree with all the blue chips that you want to hold and, and, and Digibyte is ultimately going to be the blue chip of all blue chips. And that is exactly why I love Digibyte is because of the stability of its value. It's like your true blue friend of crypto because it's better than a stable coin, right? Because at certain points when the dollar is losing, crashing in value, you certainly would rather have your money in Digibyte. All right. Thank no, you. Or, and my last question for you, uh, as far as astrology goes, you mentioned yeah. Michelle White Dove, Sylvia Brown, and all those psychics. And I, I think that you have psychic ability and astrology. Yeah. Can you tell me kind of, I don't understand how the Mars transiting across the sun will make a difference to what goes on in our lives. Can you kind of explain those real quick? It's hard to explain that because it's just basically, it's, it's as above, so below, right? As within, so without. So there are certain mathematical, it's, it's, it is math actually, similar to what, uh, you know, what Marius is talking to you guys about, it is a mathematical algorithm because it, the planets make angles to each other, right? And they're all 30 degree angles. There's oppositions, which is 180 degrees, oppositional, um, squares. Those are the hard angles, which square is 90 degrees. These are hard angles and these create problems and challenges, but then they make positive aspects too. Trines, sextiles, these aspects and quinsunks, which is another 30 degree angle. It's 150 degrees. So these create positive energies and they just work. I mean, it's, it is uh, like the chess board, the controllers, the, like, it's just the spiritual forces. It's, it's the way God like influences us on earth. I, I, you know, we know that the moon controls our tides. It works in a similar way, except that the moon controls the water and the various different planets control different aspects of what we're experiencing. So Mars is action, right? It doesn't have anything to do with the financial world except like as aftermath, but it doesn't actually create financial impact. Like I don't look at it when I'm looking at planets for Bitcoin to see what's going to happen to Bitcoin. If I see a bad Mars aspect, sometimes I see, oh, you're not gonna be able to get into exchanges because of this. But there are certain planets that have financial impact and certain planets that don't and they just do. It's just the way it works. I hope that answers you. <laughs> Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we've, we've got Tony. Uh, Tony. Yeah, this, uh, Tony Merrifield, right? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Um, so, Marius, uh, you said that silver would go to 982. When do you think that would occur? Well, it's actually already happening. Uh, you know, from now up till the year 2021, going into 21, even up till 2023. There's a whole bunch of things that has to happen going into that area. You know, the thing is when we know that this is silver is on a low. Now remember, I think Aura previously said about $11. Um, and she's right, that actually went down to 11. Don't be surprised in this next drop now for the next day or two that silver goes a little bit lower. 
I believe that this could become the world's lowest price ever in silver. A good touch, $9. But when Bitcoin hits a low, that's a great entry point. You hold, you buy and you hold, and you simply ride it up. What you will see is that silver will jump to $20. It'll jump to $40, and then you know it's game over. It's going to go. Right. Think about this now, guys. There's one product in the world that is very scarce. It's silver. Right now with coronavirus, people building hospitals all around the world. And remember this, actually. I recall somebody sent me this snippet. And I said, guys, right now, this was about September last year. I said there's about 300, no, sorry, 3,000 hospitals being built all around the world. Crazy. We said that. Why did they do it? Because they knew coronavirus was going to come. It's the most hospitals ever that were in the process of being built and they all got finished here in December and they're still building them. Now, these hospitals, what do they require? They require silver for surgical equipment. Coronavirus right. or virus or bacteria doesn't grow on silver. And guys, the health industry is going to get extremely expensive. Yeah. Remember this, the baby boomers are aging. One billion people are going to die in the next 10 to 15 years in that range. And that is going to put pressure on hospitals where they need silver. Guess what? Silver is used in all sorts of applications. It's in computers, in your iPhone, smartphone, solar power. And then the world will realize, China, that they can't get silver. So you think that uh, silver could dip to $9 even this week? Uh, yes, uh, whatever the low is now, let's say on this Friday, coming next week as well, the following week, it will bounce around there. That's going to be the low in my opinion. It could go $9. If it's $9, it will be unheard of. Because to go from yeah, 11 to 10 is difficult. For, to go from 10 to 9 is very difficult for silver. But it can happen, okay? Because remember okay. what's going to happen, guys. In this next drop now, they have to drop cryptos. I'll tell you why. If cryptos now suddenly spike above 7,000 and then go to 8,000 right now, what are people going to do in Wall Street? They're going to go like the stock market is not doing anything. The world stock markets are not doing anything. Cryptos are going up. The powers that be don't want the people or, or investors in, in stocks to move their money out of stocks into Bitcoin. That's why they are going to drop Bitcoin. This is what I'm thinking. So they'll put pressure yeah. on gold as well and silver will drop as well. Remember in September, I came out and I said that silver is going to drop, gold's going to drop and people were stunned. They said, but how can that happen when the world stock markets drop? It's because they force it to drop. Otherwise, people take their money out of the world stock markets, move it into silver and gold and silver and gold just skyrockets. But I would like to hear what Aura says there as well. You just said it. You just said absolutely everything I would have said about um, about silver and how it's used for everything and how valuable it is. And also everything I was I have been saying about why the metals are dropping and why these markets do drop and how they have to keep them down, crypto down, because exactly that. There would be a stampede, like you would not believe, of money out of the stock markets into crypto if crypto was taking off. And they have to keep that from happening while they continue to control the transition. So it's exactly, exactly how I see it. Precisely. I didn't necessarily think we would bounce down to nine, but I mean, it's totally possible. And, you know, gold can also come down, right? It can come down more. So, we're, you know, and people can short that. It, but it is risky because of the bouncing that happens. But when we do start to take off in, in silver, silver can go up 30% in a day right? It can go up 50% in a day. They're going to shut those markets out. out. And then what's going to happen is there will be um, the prices on the markets, right? And then there'll be the prices at the coin shop where you can go and you can get a lot more than that for silver. I, I, you know, I get your price of like the not in the 900s for silver, but I will say in terms of value of silver long-term, I'm not going to say this is within a year or even two years. I do believe silver will reach a point where an ounce of silver will buy you an acre of land. I think we're going to get to that point with silver. It will get so valuable, especially over long, long term. Excellent. Well, thank you. Okay, the next question so, is... So, Tony, does that answer your questions? That was fantastic. Um, <laughs> I, I really enjoyed uh, Morris's comment about the bond markets. And also yeah. uh, what Ara had also indicated too. And I'm trying to set up some trades to try to cash in on that. 
And uh, the TLT stock ticker has been a life-changing uh, reward ratio on that. So some people I know have made 100 grand in the past two weeks off of uh, trading TLT. Uh, my question to you is this week, do you believe that, and the bond markets, uh, the prices have been increasing this week. It kind of plateaued today. Uh, do you have any short-term prediction of what you think is going to happen this week? Is that for me? Because honestly, I don't actually follow the bond market. So I don't even know what price it is right now or where it's going to go. So I haven't even looked at it in, in that way. I just know that it's, it, it is the crushing of the system is the bond market. So, I mean, it, is it going to go up now? If, if it goes up, what would the percentage be? Maybe um, it might go up another five, ten percent before it would come down again. Um, but I don't have, you know, I don't, this is not one that I have a lot of information on. I'm sorry. You should, you should, I, I defer to Marius on this. Marius has the chart up. I've just shared my screen there. Can you hear me, Bill? Yeah. Yep, I can see it. Yeah. Okay. The bond market, basically what has happened is that it created this head and shoulders here. You can see there on the left hand side there, there. And then we came out and said the predicted low is about 0 0.032. So it hit exactly that point there. Expected now to go up and you actually see that it's actually going up. And then this will actually go up in conjunction with, uh, well, um, it, it will basically go up as markets go up now and as the world stock markets actually went up. But then look at that drop. It's going to drop back again to a little bit higher than that. Mm -hmm. And this year on the bottom is where the, the US, in our opinion, remember this comes from mathematical equations and then algorithmic analysis. Here it shows that the government at that point there comes and buys or do something with bond market, maybe open it to the public or they themselves push a lot of money in and then bang, it skyrockets. And uh, it doesn't, you know, so re remember here in September, uh, sorry, in, in about April, May, it hovers around you at the bottom and then it takes off. So that's how we see the bond market. Expect a bit of a drop here. But the bond market doesn't really get destroyed. A lot of people think it is, but we see it being saved. They have to save it. You know, for Donald Trump to win the election or to be put right. in power, they have to save the bond market. Otherwise, he will never, people won't vote for him. If the bond well, market exactly crashes, right. yeah, if the bond yeah. market crashes, everything crashes. Yeah, but that's exactly right in terms of the timing of markets reinflating will be before Trump is elected. That's what I'm seeing as well. So September, October into November is when things, the stock market starts to reinflate because, because elections. You know, that's it. it. It really is. It's really that simple. So okay, I guys, agree. we're going to have three more questions. One from Robert, one from Sabina, and one from TG. That will be the last questions, um, if that's okay, uh, Bill. So I think you just answered Robert's question. Okay, so let's go to Sabina. Yeah, hi. Um, Digibytes, uh, where's the, what's the best exchange to purchase it from? Because I don't see it in Coinbase. It's Anywhere. not on Coinbase. You can you can shape shift it on Exodus. You can buy it on um, Binance. Uh, uh, Binance, yeah, Binance and Shapeshifter, who I get it from. Okay. You can always and, find where a coin is able to be bought by going to um, Coin Market Cap and looking into the coin, and in the tabs down below, it shows you like the there's there's the markets a lot of information, right and in that there's a list of where you can buy it and sell it. Okay, same thing with uh, uh, Veritasium. That is going to be a little harder. That's harder. You have to get that on That's Fork harder. Delta. And you really need to know what you're doing to make a trade on Fork Delta. So mm -hmm. you need to watch some YouTube videos on how to do it. Okay, well, what's that yeah. place again? Fork Delta. Fork Delta. Fork Delta. I don't okay, know if it's dark. Unless, dark. unless you, you, I'm sorry, go ahead, Aura. Because well, there's one other option. Is ForkDelta.com or .io one of those? I'm not sure. Okay. If you're okay. looking to buy a, a, a block of $2,000 or more in Veritasium, you can, mm -hmm. the guys at um, Caleb and Brown will buy it for you. K -L Caleb and Brown? Yeah. Caleb and Brown. They're a brokerage. Brown. They're a cryptocurrency brokerage house in Melbourne, Australia. Okay. I thank you. You're welcome. Shall we go to TG? TG, yeah. Hi, guys. 
Um, we'd just like to say a big thanks to Bill, to Aurora, uh, to Marius. Um, thank you so much for this webinar. I really appreciate it. And I also would like to say I hope everybody around the world and everyone stays healthy, stays out of, well, just as best as you can be through all these troubling times. It's not easy. And to stay positive and work as communities. Um, I, I've got a couple, a few questions. They're not all crypto related. Some of it's esoteric for Aurora. Um, Marius will probably know this through past conversations going back a year ago or more than that. But um, I'll start with the first one. Um, not long ago in the conversation, we talked about the bank shutting down. Is this just a cash issue, physical cash? Or is it completely, i.e. no online transactions? The, it's going to be a limit. Yeah, that's a good question. They're going to limit the flow of capital, right? So they're going to limit how much money you can spend and you'll be able to do your sort of basic expenses. Like I think certain companies are going to be exempted, like your, you know, your rent, your mortgages, your right. uh, power, utilities, those they're going to allow you to have your money to use, right. but they're only going to let you get a couple hundred dollars in cash or something right. like that. Right. Okay. Yeah. And there, there will be some banks that will collapse. Okay, that's coming up. Um, it might take a couple months for us to get one of these U.S. bank collapses, but that's going to coincide with when Ripple starts to take off. All right. Okay. Um, thanks for that one. Uh, damn it. <laughs> the other question. I've got a few questions, to be honest. And um, all right. Okay. Is 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 what this is esoteric? Mm -hmm. Very very esoteric. This one. Um. Marius knows about this anyway, but um, do do you see through communities any uh, human community movement resistance linked to ancient technology that helps the world out? Absolutely, absolutely. When, when, I, when I say ancient technology, I'm talking about ancient technology being found that will push things to Antarctica that could help things against the problems on the planet. Is yes, I, I'm not, it's, very, it's very esoterical. So, well, I'm there's a lot. Yeah, there's Maybe a lot to that. There's a lot to that. There, there are things that people can make today if they were to put their mind to it, like the Baghdad battery, which is a basically yep. an battery that they had in Egypt, they could create battery power. There's a lot of technology. So people have a lot of time on their hands. They're going to start putting things together and they're going to start trying things out. We're going to start to get a lot of that knowledge. We're also going to get, um, so there, there's people's discoveries. There's channeled information. A lot of like the wisdom that we have has come through people who don't call themselves channels, but actually channel solutions. I mean, like uh, you know, some of the information that some of our scientists have gotten has come from esoteric sources. And, but there will be stuff that's going to be released that comes from specifically things like Antarctica and things like that. Because once these government employees aren't getting paid, they're going to leak it. They're going to sell it. They're going to sell it out. They're going to go start a company or they're going to start something up to get that knowledge out. So yes, that is going to happen. There's going to be a um, you know, I've seen this forever. My God, decades. The these new type of healing center where we are using energy and frequency and like uh, color, vibration, sound for these the, with these like sheets of of glass that are where they put you put light through them to help heal people's bodies and with various rays of the of the of the color spectrum. Yeah. So that's just one thing, but there's tons of stuff like this that's coming out and we're going to see it really start to explode over the next couple of years. And that's part of what the government's not going to be able to strangle back into the, into the box. There'll be too many people for them to strangle it all back into the box. That's really what's going to end up happening. It's just a battle. Thanks for that one. Right. Yeah. Um, this is a UK question because we're, I'm in the UK. <laughs> a couple of us are here. Sham, yeah. sir, I'm here. Um, okay, so we, we talked about communities. You talk, mentioned communities and things in America and stuff like that. I think we've all agreed Europe's probably going to collapse and some yeah. last stuff's going to go on there. Um, I, I, I really am, con I'm not sure about how the UK is going to pan out. I, I, I'm, I'm in the UK. We've got cases popping up everywhere at the moment. Um, 
I, I, I just, the, the people here are very uncommunal. <laughs> very. <laughs> and there's a lot of denial. There's a lot of absolute 60 years of programming into people's minds. Um, how, how, how have you got any insight into how good or bad things are going to get in the UK? Well, okay. So um, I lived in London when I was a kid. My mom's British. I, I love London. You know, I love, I have great affection for Britain and I understand what you're saying. Um, you're going to have people so this is the separating of the wheat from the chafe. So people who can awaken to reality and deal with it are going to be doing better. You're going to see more of the, those groups of people moving off to the side, like into the country, um, maybe working with people in Ireland and some of these countries, you know, which is a lot more, and Scotland even, which is a lot more um, bootstrap kind of mentality. So you're going to see people who are willing to roll their sleeves up and do the work, um, really building up some good, good, um, sustainable environments for people where you can be part of. But it's going to happen uh, a little more. It's going to happen slowly. I mean, it's like there's there's slowly and then suddenly there's pops of big change. And you're going to have one of your big banks is going to collapse there in London just like we're going to have here. And I, I'm hearing Barclays. So I, I think it might yeah. be Barclays that collapsed, which is, you know, the biggest bank in the world, I think, or one of the, like the figurehead of all banking. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of, sort of like a symbolic end of the era, end of the system when Barclays goes down and um, you're going to see some crazy things happen with the Royal mm -hmm. family. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, I think that's all. I mean, for me, I've, I've already seen through that. That's why Harry's gone right. and, and all the rest Can, of it it'll be very shocking for people. And there'll be a period of time where, where a lot of people are just going to be like walking around, like they're like, they're stunned. Like they just literally can't believe it's like, you know, ripping the bandages off. Like they've had their eyes covered yeah. and like all this like reality and you're going to have people like, what, you know, they, they're just going to be overload. Mm -hmm. But by that time, you know, those who are more aware will have already kind of gone off and started doing their own thing. So you're going to have opportunities there. You're not going to be like just stuck with a, a, a sleep population. Plus there are ways to heal yourself from the virus. And it's mostly going to attack people who have compromised immune systems and who are operating on a very low frequency anyway. So, you know, it's less of a scare than what the government is doing actually. Even though Laura, it does overwhelm. Laura, that is uh, really great information. Uh, Bill, would you mind if we close the meeting down now? Absolutely. Just for, sake, no, no. Yeah, just for the sake of me just uh, cutting the video out. I am still yeah. willing to stay online here, but we just need to close it down if there's any more questions to answer. I can't stay so, longer than 15 minutes, but we cut it right. down now, then I'll stop the recording. So yeah. let's go ahead and stop the recording. And I think, Marius, we, we only had two more people who, well, now we have three. But we've got Kelly, Tommy, and Kathy who have questions. And if we could limit it at that, guys, if we could, you know, unfortunately, we've got 15 minutes. So we've got three calls that will, t three more questions that we'll take. But we have to limit it at that. Marius, go ahead and shut the recording off. That's okay, okay, I just want to say, the, yeah, go ahead, Aura. Quickly, can you just drop the um, subscription link for people so that they can get that? I can't. Yesterday? Oh, you can't? We, we don't have chat good. set up. No, Aura, uh, what I what I will do, where send, it out. Will send okay. me the link, send me the link, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it okay. in on the video, plus I will put it in on the YouTube video, those same links, Aura. So I'll put it okay, in there good. that people can get it. So, okay. Luca, Bill, thank you for organizing this. Thank you very much, Aura, no, for my coming pleasure. online. Uh, I really hope that this is a really good relationship that we can start building forward. It's important that we all work together. And I really love it that you're so open and honest and uh, your information is really valuable. I really appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm really, really grateful to have been here. It was really great. Such a, It's nice to have this kind of quality of discussion. I'm really, really happy to be here. So thank you so much. Okay, awesome. Thank you. The, commun the community. Yeah. Okay.